Yeah. How are you, Ethan? Good. Um, I wanted to ask you about a couple of your movies, uh, just a couple that were my favorites, uh, Bad Santa and The Island. <laughs> what, what was it like doing those? What was good? Uh, Bad Santa was produced by um, my, my, niece, my niece's husband. So he, uh, he said, would you come in and read for it? Terry Zweig off as the director. And I read for the part that Jack did to John Ritter did. Yeah. And uh, I thought I was going to get that part. I, I remember Terry Zweig off literally falling off his chair when I did the audition. It was really great. But I wasn't a big enough star. So they gave me that other guy, which was fun. And I got to work with Bernie Mac, who I believe has passed away. Is that the right? Yeah. And he was a great guy, and we shot in a, a, a real prison, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, a, it was just a little small role, but it was real fun to do, and it's a funny movie. Yeah. I think it's a pretty funny movie, so I was glad to be in that. And The Island was great, because that was a, a good-sized role, and I got to work with uh, the most intense director in the business, Michael Bay, <laughs> who um, is kind of phenomenal. Uh, I've never seen him put more work into he, he gives 125%, 24-7. I mean, the guy does not let up. He's like a general. He's got, it's, it's a $200 million film, a $160 million film. He's got three, 400 people there. And he's, at, each second is like $10,000, you know. So he's really got to be on it. And there's so many things to juggle. I mean, he's totally focused. Um, you know, and, and Mike has a rep of, of being kind of a vitriolic guy. But I think it comes from the fact that if you don't, do what he's, if you don't put as much into it as he's doing, he, it, it, it disturbs him, you know, because he feels well, we should all be putting in this amount of work, you know. Mm -hmm. But he has an eye like a hawk. I mean, you'll be doing a scene, I remember doing a scene with, um, with Reagan, there's like 400 clones behind us, mm -hmm. and he goes, cut. What's wrong? He said, there's a clone in the fifth row on the back chewing gum. Clones don't chew <laughs> <laughs> He has his eye on everything. And, uh, He's a, he's a very funny guy, and he's very open to improv on the set. Um, I remember uh, Ewan McGregor, I guess, hadn't heard the word dude. So he was calling everybody dude, you know? And uh, he, he thought it was the coolest word. Hey, dude, what's up, dude? So we thought, well, we're clones, you know? Um, maybe we overhear one of the workers using the word dude. And so we start fooling around with that. And, and I think my character, somebody says, he says, I heard this guy use the word dude. Dude, yeah, dude. He said, hey, dude, dude, hello, dude, hi, dude, yeah, dude. Dude, what's up with that? And so we do this whole thing. We said, Michael, take a look at this. It's in the film. <laughs> and then we all had, uh, we were all clones, right, mm -hmm. for people on the outside. Right. And uh, so we were figuring, well, who, who, who's the guy on the outside? And so that was a little heavy, and I was in this tight white suit. I said, my clone was the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said to you, and I said, your clone is a movie star. <laughs> but that was kind of fun. And uh, it was great. We shot uh, in Downey in this old, I think it was a factory that made 747s. It was the largest set I'd ever been on. Mm -hmm. And they built, you know, the whole thing. And it was a really gorgeous set. A lot of fun to work on. Um. Um, I see on your website you list uh, Leonard McCoy as your favorite Star Trek character. Yeah. Uh, was that has that been consistent? Like right off the back, because as for myself, when I was a kid, obviously it was Spock. But oh. As I got older, I kind of like. No, I always liked him from the get go. From the get go. And right. he's still my favorite guy. Did you ever I, meet? The, the I never got to meet him. Mm -hmm. I met Gene Roddenberry. Mm -hmm. um, obviously Leonard Nimoy and, and, and uh, I'm friends with Walter, and George, and uh, Michelle. Um, and Will Wheaton, uh, but but um, no, I never I never met him. And why did you like him? Um, I liked his uh, the way he was calm in the kind of relaxed, dry way in the face of anything. He just kind of never lost his sense of uh, of humor. I, I felt. I mean, he got angry, obviously, and stuff like that. Sure. But he had this quality that was. Um, A real strong quality of forbearance, and um, and he seemed real grounded to me. Yeah. And I just the man was himself was very appealing. I thought I just liked his kind of it was a rustic old time quality about him that I found very relaxing and cool, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he never seemed not that the others did, but he he never pushed, you know. Right. He was just very right there. He always seemed to me to be telling the truth, you know, as an actor. Right. And. Um, 
it was easy to listen to. I felt, you know, just, just you know how some people feel. Either. I liked all the other characters, but he stood out to me. Hey, I guess it's. Yes, it. <laughs> I'm so confused. You? <laughs> I'm so confused. Um, obviously, as as a Star Trek actor, this isn't your first convention, and I, I imagine you've probably done more than your fair share of them. So, is there uh, anything when you come to these cons that still surprises you? Any anything from the fans? Um, anything that still surprises me. Um, The, 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 I guess the, 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 the amount of uh, hours they spend up partying. <laughs> <laughs> these guys at these conventions, they go to bed at four in the morning. They're bigger drinkers than I ever thought. Um, but, uh, no, I guess, uh, not to sound goody-goody, but the thing that surprises me, continues to, to amaze me, is how um, the lack of cynicism that these fans have. They all tend to be... Uh, they, 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 uh, they have a sense of hope about them, about the future, and I think that comes with being a sci-fi fan, I guess. But um, and, and how sweet they all are, and pleasant, and easy to be with, and, um, you know, not arrogant in any kind of bad way, you know. They just seem like really good guys and gals, you know, and, I, I, and that's a real pleasure to be around. I really enjoy meeting them, you know. Um, I, the biggest surprise was the first convention I went to when I saw that they, you know, re how much they loved the show. And I was surprised because I, you know, we never had mentioned conventions or, or <laughs> Hardcastle and McCormick conventions. But uh, <laughs> so I was like, wow, these guys, you know, they, they get together and and, uh, and they form these clubs and they do this great charity work and, 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 and stuff. And so, but no, they, I, I, uh, too many surprises. Um, one guy asked me to sign his car. <laughs> that was a surprise. <laughs> what kind of car was it? I think it was a Chevy Vega. <laughs> <laughs> no, and they were not good. They didn't come with a warranty. They came with an apology. <laughs> I had a Chevy Vega. I remember I went to a toll booth once. The guy said two bucks. I said sold. <laughs> <laughs> Bad car. <laughs> Church raffle. <laughs> it's the shittiest car they could get. Can you tell us about Benson and Boston Legal? Um, in Benson, uh, I came in on the second year uh, with Renee. Um, it was uh, it's a funny show, and I think it's still funny. It wasn't as topical as a lot of shows are. Um, a real classic comedy writers for it, and uh, Bob was just uh, just a wonderfully acerbic actor, you know, and a talented guy, and, and great to work. The whole cast was, they all had a theater background, we all got along really well, and um, at the time I think, you know, it was one of the, I, when did Cosby go on the air, do you know? In the 80s. In the late 80s? or Yeah, 84 I think. And what about the Red Fox show? That was 70s. Right, because I think Bob was the only African American at the time who had a lead in the show, um, so there was a kind of an exclusivity about it, and uh, he, uh, I think he might have felt a little pressure about that, in a sense. But um, under all that, he he was a very charming man and a very funny guy and easy to work with. And I actually have seen him. Uh, I recently saw him a couple of years ago up at he's living uh, up in uh, North Los Angeles. Um, he had a stroke, I think. A few years back, but he's still sharp as a tack, and it looks great. I guess he's got to be about 83 or 84. Mm -hmm. But it was a, a lot of fun to shoot that show. Like just, a, just a blast. And uh, for me, you know, I came out of the New York theater, and I, I, I was living on peanuts. You know, I didn't have any. I was doing theater and be an odd voiceover, and living in a, you know, like a, just a crappy little place in the village, and to go out and all of a sudden get a, a paycheck that, you know, was more than I'd ever seen. Was really nice, you know, and, and it enabled me to, uh, you know, I mean, it wasn't, 
I wasn't a millionaire, but I, I saved all my money, and then I could do for the next 10 years before I got Star Trek. I didn't have to clean toilets and drive cabs anymore. I, I could pull on that, which I did for the next 10 years and exhausted it. But I was able to do theater and stuff, and it was great. It was kind of like a, what was it, like a trust fund or something, or, or a grant almost, you know, <laughs> so that I could continue to be a stage actor. So I'm really grateful for the, uh, the, for the program. And uh, Austin Legal just, um, uh, I think I had four shows, but they only, they only did three of them. I've had an arc. And uh, the thing I most remember about Boston Legal was um, M uh, Michael Kelly, who, who's it? Is it Mike Kelly? Who's the producer of that? David Kelly. David Kelly. He, um, he, 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 I guess, used the same crew over and over again. And it was such a well oiled machine that they gave you time, the director gave the actors time to uh, really investigate their characters more than you normally get in television. Television's kind of like shoot, move on, shoot, move on. But these guys would, the directors would come back and they go, let's try it again, but let's look for this and let's look for that. They really gave you a chance to, to get some uh, nooks and crannies and peaks and valleys into the, uh, into the geography of the character that you don't normally find on TV. And I think that's because the crew did such an excellent job that they freed up more time for that aspect of it. Um, what, do you, what are you working on right now, or do you have any projects? Um, I just finished doing this new show called The Good Guys with Brad Oh, yes. oh I love that show. Yeah. It's a good show. I just did a guest star on that in Dallas. I just finished last week for 10 days. And before that, I did a guest star on another show called The Zoli and Isles, oh, yes. which is just going to air, yeah. uh, which will start. I think started airing this month. I don't know what episode I'm in. And then I did another new show that just started to air now. It's on, on, it's on a network called HDNet. I don't know if you guys get it up here. It's called Svetlana, by, and the director's Iris Barr. And uh, it's very funny. She plays this this hooker. She plays, she's like the head of a brothel uh, <laughs> in an apartment in Los Angeles. And she's got this thick Russian accent. And uh, it's kind of all improvised, like the Larry David show, and it's very, very funny. <laughs> and uh, I got to play the head of a sexaholics <laughs> uh, counselor meeting, which reminds me of the time that I was in a movie called Jeffrey with Patrick Stewart. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. I, I played Dave, who's the guy who's he's talking to the sexaholics, and he says, hi, my name is Dave. And I'll go, hi, Dave. And he goes, uh, I'm here because I have a 14-inch penis that is perpetually erect. Nobody goes, hi, Dave. <laughs> so, um, like about a, a couple of years later, I'm, I'm doing um, that Ferengi in uh, Next Generation. And, uh, no, 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 I'm doing Neelix. That's right, I'm doing, it's like my first or second week in Neelix. That's right. And I'm sitting there, and I'm in Neelix makeup, and Patrick Stewart came to visit the set. And uh, he says, uh, I said, hi, Patrick. He says, nice to meet you. I said, we did a movie together. He said, what? I said, Jeffrey. He said, who were you? I said, I was Dave. And he said, oh, you're the chap of the 14-inch cock. <laughs> <laughs> so that was great. Um, yeah, yeah, that was good. I, I can't remember how I got onto that. But, uh, oh, yes, yeah, Svetlana. And then I did a movie called Audrey that we shot in February. No stars. It's kind of, I guess, a chick flick, you know, but a really sweet movie. And I'm hoping that that, you know, these things go to festivals and then get picked up by distributors. And maybe it'll get out there. Maybe it won't. You don't know. And uh, did a play before that. And I was on Broadway before that doing Nathan Lane, uh, David Mamet played with Nathan Lane called November that ran for about nine months with Laurie Metcalf and Dylan Baker. And that was a lot of fun being back on Broadway. It's only the second time I've done Broadway. So I've been keeping busy, you know. Working on a play, we had a reading in London in May, and hopefully they're going to do it this October. So 